worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual.
Can I get the strings? Oh, in yeah, I did there is no God like our God. There is no King like our King. I think I won't Lift it up. 
Your voice matters in worship. Your own voice, it matters in worship. Unto Jesus. Lift your voice in this place. Onya me kasi ye di ye ka anopeyo fisa safo asafu ye oh oni oni ye. Do you believe it tonight? Ah, he is our shield and our buckler. He is our hiding place. He calls Shaki Hada. Oni, oni, yeah. Oni, yeah. It is the only couple. Our ever present help in time of need. Me and Bwapo. And Opeo. Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Oh, yeah, hallelujah. We will not forget your benefits. We will not forget your goodness and your consistency. We will not forget your faithfulness. Onya kopo aya hasada ni buafo kese. Hallelujah aya hasada. The Lord of hosts, He is amongst us. He is with us. We are not afraid of the arrows by day, nor the terror by night, because if the Lord be for us, niye. Wafo <laughs> He that is with us, he that is in us, is greater than he that is in the world. He part of us, lift your voice, confess it, Mizuro, baby. Personalize it, Mizuro, Mizuro, Media Mizuro. If we send your team, we will know. Also, sing. Oh, 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 oh. The Lord is for you this morning. As you worship, declare. If we send your team, we will know. Also, sing. Yeah, 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 Zuro. One more time. Yeah, Zuro, baby. Yes, you Yes, Let the redeemed of the Lord say, Yes, you Yeah, yes, Jesus is for us. Jesus is with us. Yes, you If you say, also sing your own, yes. Yes, Lord. If you said your kind of honor, your kind of honor, also sing your own, yes. Yes, Lord. Can you lift up your hands from wherever you are? Can you lift up your hands? Yes, you are. Yes. You are saying that you are amongst a number of those who are not afraid. By the lifting up of your hands, can you lift up your hands to me? Yes, you are, baby. Yes, you are. 
know you look good. You look good this morning. You look fabulously awesomely dressed. But there is a God who made provision for that that you are wearing. There is a God who created the atmosphere for you to thrive. And this morning you ought to lift up your voice and recognize that God who is able to make the impossible possible. Who is able to turn situations around. So why so me more? seated put your hands together welcome welcome to the second service are you clapping are you excited
believe it, if you believe it, put your hands together and say something. Yeah, say something. If you believe it, you say something. So I'm not feeling you at all. If you believe it, say something. Say something. Tell somebody if you believe it, say something. Say something. Okay, stand, stand, stand and let us pray. Stand and let us pray. With your hands lifted up everywhere. Heavenly Father, say Heavenly Father. Once again we have gathered. We are gathered. We've come from every work of life. We've come from different upbringing for a new experience. Touch us, Lord. Give us a new experience. Illuminate the eyes of our understanding. Let the veil be destroyed. Let complications be resolved. Let limits be broken. Let embargoes be lifted. Let the veil be destroyed as we put our hands together in the name of Jesus. Destroy the veil. Lift the embargoes. Break limitations. Destroy restrictions. Let there be light. Let there be light. Let there be illumination. Let there be revelation. A new experience. Fresh oil. Fresh oil. A fresh oil. In the name of Jesus. New beginnings. Breakthroughs in the atmosphere. Breakthroughs in the heavens. Breakthroughs on the waters. Breakthroughs on the land. Breakthroughs domestic and external. Breakthroughs within and without. <clears throat> breakthroughs home and abroad. Put it together. Declare breakthrough. In Jesus' name, Amen. Before you are seated, I'd like you to be nice. Just step away from where you are. Greet somebody. And welcome them to church. Tell them it's great. It's good and great having you in the house. And those of you at home, all my online community and church and family, welcome to church. Hallelujah. It's a good day. Put your hands together and give him praise if you believe it. You may be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Lift up your eyes and say, I will not die prematurely, but I shall live and fulfill the word of the Lord concerning me. And say, I will see the full effect of everything spoken and written of me in the volumes of the books, in my lifetime, in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, say something and put your hands together. At the first service, I was talking about a topic and a subject that I believe will impact your life and my life. The title of the message is, Your Ladder Will Be Greater. Your Ladder. Tell, get up, tell two people, your ladder will be greater. Your ladder, I can see it. Tell two people, I see it. Tell them, I see it. I see your ladder will be greater. It will be. Your ladder will be greater and better and all together beautiful than your past. If you believe it, put your hands together and say something. There's a principle, there's a principle that has worked as a pattern, as a pattern over the years and the decades since creation. And it's a principle that works positively and negatively. So we need to understand how this principle works. If you come with me to 2 Corinthians 4, 13, the Bible said, we having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak. Now, move to Romans 10.10. 10. Romans 10.10. 10. For, for with the heart. For the, okay, go ahead. 
For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So faith is of the heart, but faith is released by the mouth. Say faith is of the heart and not the head, and faith is released by the mouth. So this is the principle here. If you believe, you must say it. Tell somebody, if you believe, you must say it. Now, if you believe and you don't say it, you never see it. If you believe, tell somebody, if you believe and you don't say it, you don't see it and you don't have it. Tell somebody. Now, now understand, I am in charge of this class. This is a class. I'm in charge of this class, and if you don't follow my instructions, I have the right to fail you and you won't walk. So if you want to pass and walk, you better listen to me. Amen. And I'm a hard teacher here, I'm telling you. Amen. Tell somebody, faith is of the heart, not of the head, and is released by the mouth. So if you believe, you must say it. You say what you believe. Other than that, you don't believe. He said, as it is written, they believe and they spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, but with the mouth faith is released unto what? Salvation, which means deliverance. So you can have what you believe. Unless you say it with your mouth. Now Mark eleven twenty three. Mark eleven twenty three. Mark eleven twenty three. For verily I say unto you, mm -hmm. that whosoever shall say unto God, whosoever man, shall say, whosoever shall be quiet, no sir. Whosoever shall be silent, no sir. Whosoever shall be cool, no. Whosoever shall say nothing, but whosoever shall say whosoever unto, shall say whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea uh -huh. and shall not doubt in his heart and shall not doubt in his head no mm, but where in his heart so faith is of the heart and not of the head so you can have doubt in your mind but as long as you have faith in your heart you will have whatsoever you say so you can believe in your heart speak out of your heart and be doubting in your head but as long as there is faith in your heart and you speak the faith out of your heart with your mouth you can doubt in your mind and you still have what you say because faith is of the heart and not of the head put your hands together and give him praise praise him, praise him, put your hands together clap and say something, say something go ahead yeah Right, Bishop, start but again. shall verily, believe, but shall verily, believe. Verily, start again. Verily, I say. For verily, you. I say unto you, uh -huh. that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, is there a whosoever here? Mm. Turn to somebody and say, you are a whosoever, and I am a whosoever. <laughs> and tell somebody, whosoever means you. Whosoever means you. Yeah, you are whosoever. Go ahead. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, yes, sir. Be thou removed. And be thou cast into the sea, mm -hmm. and shall not doubt in his heart, mm -hmm. but shall believe that those things which he saith shall those come to pass. Those things which he saith. Those things which he is quiet about. No. Those things which he believes. No. Is that what he said? No. But those things which he saith. So believing is not enough because even the demons believe and tremble. So you got to go past belief. When you believe, you say it. When you believe, you declare it with your mouth. Yes, Tell somebody, say something. Say something. Go ahead. But believe it, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall those come to pass. Those things which he saith. How many times of saying do we have here? How many times? Look at it. How many times of saying? Whosoever shall say unto three or four. Mm -hmm. Three times. Mm-hmm. How many times? Three times in one verse. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Say, 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 say. Tell somebody, say something, say something. Okay. So it's important that you say something. And you must understand how the principles work. In the beginning in Genesis, God said and God saw. 
God said and God saw. God said and God saw. God said and God saw. So you have to keep saying it till you see it. Tell somebody, keep saying it till you see it. And then God moved from saying it to calling it. You get it? He saw it, he said it, he saw it, and he called it. So let's run through some scriptures quickly. Come with me, quickly. To the book of Genesis, quickly. Come to Genesis. Chapter 1, verse 3, verse 6, verse 9, verse 11, verse 14, verse 20, verse 24, verse 26, verse 12, verse 10, verse 18, 21, 25, 31. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. And God saw the light, that it was good. God said, let there be light. And there was light. So there was light because light just came. No. But there was light because God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God, no, he said, Tell somebody, keep saying it till you see it. Go ahead. And God saw the light that it was good. Uh -huh. And God divided the light from the darkness. Uh -huh. And God called the light day. God said he saw and he called. Yes, sir. Tell somebody, call it. Tell somebody, call it. Tell somebody, name it. You got to learn to say it, see it, call it, name it. Go ahead. And God called the light day and the darkness he called God, night. God called. God called. Tell somebody, call the light. Call the light. Call the light. That was, it's a principle. Mm -hmm. God called the light and said, let there be what? Light. And there was light. Yes. First of all, you got to call the light. You got to call the light. So whatever you don't want, don't call it. Tell somebody, whatever you don't want, don't call it. Because what you call will come to pass. Say, I refuse to call anything. Contrary to the word of God concerning my life, I will not call it. I will call what God has said. Put your hands together. Say something. Okay, go ahead. Verse 6, and God said, let there be firmaments. Mm -hmm. God, verse 8, mm -hmm. and God called the firmament you see, heaven. God said and God called. Keep going. Verse 9, and God said, let there be waters. Let there be waters under the heaven and gather Do the Do you together. realize that everything God said or called happened? And nothing happened. Nothing came until God said it or called it. Tell somebody, you have to say something. You have to say something. Tell somebody, you have to call it. You have to call it. And God called the dry land earth, that is verse 10, and the mm -hmm. greater, and the gathering together of the waters called he sees. You see, said, called. And God saw that it was good. You get it? God said, called, saw, and it was good. Amen? Amen. Tell somebody, say it, see it, call it. Put your hands together, say something. We are still on. Go ahead. Verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Who seed God, it himself? Said. And God said. And everything he said happened. Yes, Did sir. Did it happen? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Look 12. at this. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree so yielding So how did fruit. the earth, the Bible says, and the earth walk brought forth yes, sir. after God said. After God said. It means nothing happened until you say something. Mm. So clap your hands and say something. Say something. Say something. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord will satisfy me with long life and his salvation. You have to say the word. You got to keep saying it to see. Go ahead. 
Go ahead, Verse 12, and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, mm -hmm. and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself mm -hmm. after his kind. And God saw and God, that it was good. And God, what did he see? What he saw what he said. Yes, sir. So turn to somebody and say, what are you saying? You, what are you saying? And turn to somebody else and say, what have you been saying? <laughs> Verse 14, and God said, Mm -hmm. Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven mm -hmm. to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Mm -hmm. And then you come to verse 18. Mm -hmm. and, the rule of, and to rule over the day and over the night and the, to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. God saw. God saw. He saw what? That it was good. Tell somebody, it's he saw what, he, what said. he said. So tell somebody, keep saying it. Keep speaking the word till you see it. So you can't stop speaking the word until you see the word. It's a principle. It's a pattern. And that's why the Bible said, death and life is in the power of the tongue. So if you don't like something, don't say it. Some of you, you just talk. When you're upset, when you're offended, when you are hurt, you talk. But you got to be careful yes, because you'll be speaking, confessing something you don't like. And because it's a pattern and a principle and a law, you have what you say. Mm. Say, I renounce and I negate. Every negative word I have released into my atmosphere, giving the adversary a legal ground to afflict me and exact on me and my loved ones Say in the name of Jesus, right now, by the blood of the covenant, in the name of Jesus, I call for an immediate annulment of negative words spoken by me in the days of ignorance. I annul it right now as I put my hands together. Come on, somebody. Say something. Say something. I call for an annulment. I annul negative words, confession, things spoken by hurt, by pain, by suffering, by anger, by affliction, by doubt, by unbelief, by arrogance, by fear, by pride, by insecurity of any kind, shape or form. I am all in the name of Jesus. Say yes. Okay, put your hands together. Let's move on. Okay, where are we now, Bishop? Okay, verse 20 is the same thing. God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly, the moving creatures, etc. Verse 21, uh -huh. and God created great whales, etc. The last bit, it said, and God saw that it was good. Again, Again you come God to... said, God saw. Go ahead. Verse 24, and God said... Let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle, etc. Then you come to 25. At the end, the Bible said, and God saw that it was good because it all happened as he had said. 26, and God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let us make him. So God created man, male and female created in them. 26, and God blessed them. 29, and God said, Behold, I have given, I've given you every hair bringing seed. And verse 31, and God saw everything that he had made. And behold, it was very good. So God kept saying, calling, saying, calling, saying, and keep saying. And then he saw that everything he had said came into full effect. And it was very good. And it operated through the principle of saying it, calling it, and seeing it. Put your hands together and give God praise. Now realize, realize, if you look at Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, God created, but man was not formed. Man was created, but man was informed. So even though God kept saying it, God blessed them, and God gave them instructions and order and everything, they were still not formed. They were still not formed. Look at Genesis. Look at Genesis 2, 18. And God said, it is not good 
that a man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for mm -hmm. him. Let's go back to see where man was formed. 22. When man was created, it's 1, 26, 27. Yeah, that was created. I'm talking about form. That's Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7. Okay. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life. And man became a living you see, soul. So Genesis 1, 26, 27, 28, man was created and man was blessed. And God gave man instruction, but he was created by words. Say words. words. Say it my way. Say words. words. But he was informed. It was in Genesis 2 and 7. Look at verse 5. Look at Genesis 2, 5. Uh-huh. And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, mm -hmm. and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the earth. You see, so if ground. you look at this scripture, Genesis 2, and you look at the fifth verse, man was created, but man was not formed. And because man was in form, God held back the rain. You know, sometimes people want some blessings, and they want God to give them some things. But if you really check them out, you realize that they haven't developed the capacity the faithfulness, the maturity to handle some things. And so God delays. He delays some things. There have been certain delays in my life over the years. I prayed some prayers. I believed for some things that did not happen at the time I prayed and I believed for it because I believed I wasn't ready and I wasn't mature for some things. So God held some things for me. It wasn't the enemy. And sometimes God also allowed the enemy to fool with you when you are not ready for some things. And I realized after many years, as I've come of age, I realized that I was not ready for some things. Because if those things had come to me at that time, I would have abused and mishandled it. And abuse, abuse of a thing, abuse of a thing is the lack of understanding and ignorance of the value of that thing. When you don't know the value of something, you mishandle, you abuse it. I wasn't ready for some things. I'm in a better place today than I was yesterday. If you like, you can try me and test me with some things right now. For instance, I had a friend of mine, Bill McKinley. And Bill McKinley was Bishop Jackie McCallie's spiritual father in Brooklyn, New York. And Bill and I were buddies. So Bill came to Ghana and visited me, stayed in my house, and we were sitting by the pool drinking coffee. And Bill said, I see that you need money. I want to help you. If I give you a million dollars without interest to pay me back in a year or two, what will you do with it? I said, I need to think about it. He shook his head. He said, I'll give you $100,000 as a gift, but you are not ready for a million dollars. I said, why you say that? He said, if you need to think about what to do with my million dollars, then it means you are not ready for a million dollars. I said, Lord God Almighty, what happened? And that is a the situation. There are some of you right now. A, 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 a guy came to see me, a businessman, years ago. He saw me and he brought a business transaction and he wanted me to pray for a breakthrough. So I asked him, what are you going to do with all this money when it comes into your hand? He said he was going to open a five-star hotel somewhere in his village that is not on the map of Ghana. And I said, I'm sorry, I'm not going to pray. And he said, why? I said, who is going to come to that village that is not on the map of Ghana? Even the hotels in the city are struggling. Much more some village somewhere that I can't even remember the name. You need interpretation of tongues. Do you remember the name? And it's very clear that this guy was not ready for what he was asking for. And there are so many people, they are not ready for some things. If you watch the man that received five talents, the man that received two talents, the man that received one talent, the Bible said to everyone was given to them according to their several abilities. We stand to reason logically that the man that had five talents had the ability to handle five. The one that had two had ability to manage two. The one that had one had ability to handle one. That means that the one that had one didn't have developed the ability to handle five talents. And the one that had two didn't have the ability to handle five talents. 
So to everyone was given to them according to the ability. So there is no need for envy and jealousy. This envy and jealousy in Africa, where we take people to juju men and we go and do things to kill, pull down one another, this crabology mentality, pull him down, kill him, character assassination, attacking people, making fun of people, thinking you are better than others, mocking people and all that, you are very ignorant. Because let me tell you something, whatever you have in this life and you are handling now is what you are, I was not ready. But I wanted it. Now, watch this. The Bible didn't say that God will meet your wants. He said he will meet your needs. Your needs are things you can't do without. But wants are things you can do without. And God said, I will meet your needs. He didn't say your want. Now, I want so many things I don't need. For instance, I can want a Rolls Royce. But can I do without a Rolls Royce? Yes, of course. Now, if I don't have a car, I need a car. I need a car, which is helper, like the horse, to take me places. So I need a car. But I can have a car, and I can want a private jet, or I can want some things I'm not ready for, and I don't need. So turn to somebody and say, stop your jealousy. Stop it. Yeah, stop your insecurity. That's the problem in the church. People assume they can handle some things. It's very easy for you to criticize me when you look at my situation or my family situation. You can say whatever you want to say. But until you are in my position and in my shoes and deal with what I deal with and do better than I, you are not qualified to criticize me. You are a hypocrite and you are an amateur. <laughs> Come on, put your hands together. Is anybody clapping? So man was created, but man was not formed. Man was not formed. And the man that was formed didn't suffer anything, so he didn't understand the value of what he had. The first Adam did not suffer anything, so he had no value for what he had. The second Adam, or the last Adam, suffered many things, so he understood obedience. You can never be obedient if you haven't suffered in life. And lasting success in life is a product of suffering. And suffering here is pain. If you have never been through pain, you can't appreciate the value of a thing. When you don't pay a price for something, you don't know the value of it, and you don't appreciate it. Things you get without ending it, you can't, it's not lasting. You can't keep it because you didn't end it. But if you went through something to get it, you can appreciate it. Put your hands together for somebody. I was telling somebody yesterday, I said, I have learned obedience through much suffering. I've, the Bible said that though he was a son, yet lent him obedience through the many things he suffered. The many things he suffered. Jesus was a son and yet lent obedience through the many things he suffered. Through success. Lasting success is a product of suffering. It's a product of suffering. The Bible talks about the fellowship of his suffering. And the Bible says if we suffer with him, if we suffer with him, we will reign with him. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Lift up your hands, everybody. Let's begin to pray right now for the next five minutes. Let's just pray. Let's lift up prayer. Bishop, take over. Let's begin to pray right now. I can't hear your prayers. Keep praying. I have to change the Lift battery up your on voice. my phone. Lift, Lift up your voice. Battery. Lift Just up your keep... voice. Lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. God said, God saw it. Begin to make declarations over your life, over your family, over your business. Begin to make declarations. What do you want to see? What do you want to see? What do you want to experience? Begin to name it. Begin to declare it. They believed and therefore they spoke. We also believe and therefore we speak. Lift up your voice. What do you want to see in your family, in your business, in the lives of your children? Lift up your voice. Make a declaration. He said, I prophesied as I was commanded. Declare. Create. 
an atmosphere that will bring the manifestation of that which you are expecting from God. Lift up your voice wherever you are. Call upon the name of the Lord. You cannot keep silent. You cannot hold your peace. Make a declaration. Make a decree. The Bible said they decree. You shall decree a thing and it shall be established. Lift up your voice. Make a decree. Issue a command. Prophesy a change in your life, in your business, in the work of your hands. Lift up your voice. Pray. Make a declaration. Oh, I can't hear you at all. The Lord wants to hear your voice. Something must change. You have looked at other people's testimonies and heard it for too long. It's about time you have a testimony. And you can create that testimony by the word of your mouth, by the declaration of your mouth, by the prayer from your heart. Lift up your voice. Issue a command. Prophesy a manifestation of a change, of a transformation in your life. Lift up your voice. Call upon his name. They spoke because they believed. We also believe. And therefore we speak, prophesy, make a decree. Lift up your voice. Kudalama Watasaya. Create the right atmosphere. Create the right atmosphere for your children by prophesying the decrees of God's word in the name of Jesus. And you will see a manifestation of the things that you have decreed according to the word of the Lord. Luma Watasaya. Concerning your health, concerning your business, concerning your life, Concerning your progress, concerning your education, in the name of Jesus, issue a decree. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above only. The heaven shall be open over you, open over your children, open over your family. The work of your hands shall flourish. He said, whatever our hands find to do, it shall prosper. Issue a decree, issue a command. Say something about your life, about your children, about the work of your hands, about your health. Change that negative health report. Change it by the words of your mouth. In the name of Jesus, change the testimony that you have experienced in the past by commanding and decreeing a change in your life, a change in your business, a change in the lives of your children, a change in the lives of your grandchildren. Lift up your voice. Issue a command. Command a change. Command a transformation. In the name of Jesus, lift up your voice. Don't hold your peace at all. Clap your hands if you can and issue a command. Overturn anything fighting your progress. Overturn anything fighting the manifestation of your testimony. Lift up your voice. Clap your hands. Command it. Command it. Command it. Command it. Command a chain. Command a transformation. Command a chain. Command a transformation. Issue a decree. Prophesy change. In the name of Jesus, don't hold your peace. The angels are waiting to carry out the assignment to bring into manifestation the word of God concerning you. For his word is settled. When you pray the word, you must see a manifestation. Issue that decree. Say something. Command a change and a transformation. In the name of Jesus. Kudaba Watasaya. Kantari Mikadaya, prophesy, prophesy, command a change and a transformation. Something must change in your life. Something must change in your family. Let the old family pattern change. Let the evil cycle be removed and broken and transformed in the name of Jesus. Any negative pattern in your family, you have power in your mouth through the word of God to change and override and overturn it. In the name of Jesus, let the evil cycle break. Let the evil pattern be broken. In the name of Jesus, the pattern of shame, the cycle of shame, the pattern of failure, the cycle of failure, the cycle of complications and setback. Overturn it, override it in the name of Jesus and decree that I will no more be set back. I will not walk in shame. I will not be a failure. I will not be a disappointment. My children will not be failures. My children will not be disappointment. In the name of Jesus, our children will excel. The seed of the righteous shall be delivered. The seed of the righteous shall be taught of the Lord. The seed of the righteous shall be mighty in the land. Lift up your voice. Issue a command. Prophesy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for your understanding. Sit down. Clap your hands. Say something. 
Clap your hands, say something. Thank you for your understanding. Amen. Okay, so we've talked about God saw that it was good. But look at Genesis 2, 22 and 23. Mm -hmm. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. So here he called. He saw and he called. Look at Genesis 1, 3 and 5. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm -hmm. And verse 4, and God called the light day. <laughs> and God saw the light, that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. Verse 5, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. Okay, go to Genesis 2, 19 and 20. Out of the ground. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air mm -hmm. and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And, and see what he will call what he will call them. What he would call them. Go ahead. And Watch whatsoever this. Adam called every living creature, that was the name so thereof. Whatever Adam called, whatever he called, that was the name. So do you know that the name of a lion was mentioned by Adam in Genesis and he's still a lion after today. The names of all the animals we call, the first word of the name of that beast came out of the mouth of Adam and is still so after today. So what are you calling things around you? What are you calling your children? Because the Bible says, as the name of a child is, so is he. So you got to be careful of the names you give to your kids. Because if you call, there are people who call, the, 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 I know people who, like their name means death. Uwo. Yeah. Death. Why are you calling death? Why do you call a child Uwo? Death. You are inviting it. You are invoking it. And as you keep calling it, that's what is going to happen. So you got to watch what you say, what you call, and what you name. Amen. Are we in verse 20? 20. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air mm -hmm. and to every beast of the field. Mm -hmm. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. So, so this is the strategy here. To everything he called or named, it was so. Yes, sir. Up to today. Everything he named and he called from Genesis 1 is the same up to today. It can't be changed. And God called and God said, let there be light. And they've always been the light God said up to today. Up to today. The Bible said, the Bible said, for there was a man sent from God to bear witness of the light, but he was not the light. Then the Bible said, this is the light that shines every man that comes into this world. So what is that light? Then Jesus came and he said, I am the light of the world. So who is the light that shines every man that comes into this world? Jesus. Jesus is the light. Put your hands together and say, Jesus is the light. Everything God said in the beginning is still in force, is still in effect after today. You can't change it. So you have to be conscious of the fact that we must follow the patterns and the principles God has said in his word if we want to see result. Say, I hear you. And one of the reasons why we must speak and declare the word of God is because God watches over his word to perform it. Jeremiah 1.12, Luke 1.25. Acts 27, 25. Jeremiah 1, 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast well seen. You see again, will... you have well seen. You've seen what I said. You've seen what I said. And because you've seen what I've said, watch the manifestation. For I will hasten my word to perform it. God said, I will bring to pass what I've said. I will hasten my word. I will perform my word. Why? Because you've seen right. You've seen what I've said. Verse 10, 
verse 11, and because you've seen right, I will hasten my word to perform it. So God is waiting on you and I to give voice to the word that he might perform it. Look at Psalm 103, verse 20. Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, mm -hmm. that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. You see, so the angels are waiting on you and I to give voice to the scriptures, voice to the word, voice to the promise, so that God will hasten to perform it. It does not happen until you say something. Until you put your faith to work through your mouth, the word does not come to pass. Reading the word and putting the word under your pillow, putting the Bible under your pillow and just reading the word is not enough. It's not enough. It doesn't work that way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing. Faith doesn't come by reading. And as a matter of fact, faith does not come by study. It comes by hearing. So how does faith come? Psalm 27, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is the strength of my life and of whom shall I fear? As you keep hearing that over and over again, it produces faith in your heart. When my enemies, even my foe, come out to eat up my flesh, they stumble and they fall. Therefore, let them that seek my, my blood and my flesh, let them stumble and fall. Let them be drunk with their own blood and be fed with their own flesh. Isaiah 49, verse 26. Yeah. Let them be drunk with their own blood. Yes, sir. That seek and desire my blood and the blood of my seed and let them be fed with their own flesh. That is how faith comes. Yes, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word with your own mouth, not reading the Bible. I, oh, I read the Bible. It's not enough. Faith doesn't come by reading the Bible. And the devil is not afraid of you reading the Bible. He's not, he's not also afraid when you study the Bible. Because studying of the word brings understanding, but it doesn't bring faith. Understand thou what you are reading? Do you understand what you are reading? Daniel chapter 9. I understood by the books. So reading brings understanding. Then the Ethiopian eunuch, Philip asked him, he said, understand it thou do you understand what you are reading and he said how can I understand if I don't have somebody to guide me so reading the word brings understanding but it doesn't bring faith so those of you who just read your bible and you think you've read the bible so that is it you are joking the demons will still attack you to worry you it's not enough to read you got to go past reading you got to speak it you got to give voice to the word you got to proclaim it like you go to Psalm 35 you go to Psalm 35, the Bible says, plead my cause with them that strive with me. O Lord God, my shield and my buckler and my stronghold, plead my cause with them that strive with me, secretly and openly, plead my cause, take hold of shield, buckler, stand to my help and my defense. O Lord my God, you got to declare the scriptures. Yes, if you don't declare it, reading it is not enough. Yes, sir. And stop putting the Bible under your pillow. A lawyer can know the law, but it's not enough for him to know the law. In order for the law to work before him, he goes to court, he stands before the judge and says, my Lord, my Lord, according to so, so, and so, and so, article or section, one, two, three, or what, and he quotes, and he brings it before the judge. Then, whoever is the opponent, the attorney, will raise an objection and say, my Lord, objection. Objection to that quote that he just mentioned. Then the judge has discretion to maintain or sustain the quote or override it. So the judge will say, objection overrule or objection sustain. Counsel move on. So the word of God, the word of God is a technicality, it's a legality. And the danger with all of us is we just read the word and think because you read from Genesis to Revelation, it's enough. It's not enough. You have knowledge, you have understanding, but it doesn't produce faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Romans 10, 17. Look at it. 
Faith comes by hearing. Did he say hearing? Yes, sir. Did he say hearing? Can by hearing? No. He didn't say hearing. Look at it. Faith comes by hearing and hear. That's it. Word of God. Say it's continuous. Continuous. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. Say yes. yes sir. Why are you looking at me with that kind of a look? What have I done to you? I'm just trying to help you. So stop looking at me with that some way look. Come on, somebody, put your hands together. Say something. Amen? So let's move on. Next scripture. Luke 1 45. Luke 145. And blessed is she that believed. Uh -huh. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Uh huh. Again, say it again. And blessed is she that believed. Blessed is what? She that believed. Blessed is she that believed. Uh huh. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her. So if you look the at Lord. the scriptures carefully, she didn't just believe. She did something more than believe. She believed and she said something. She said, be it done unto me according to thy word. That is belief. She responded with her mouth and with faith in her heart. I don't know how these things can be. Tell somebody, you don't know who you are sitting next to. You don't know who you are sitting next to. Hear me. I declare... There is coming the rising up of new millionaires. There is coming the rising up of new billionaires. Tell somebody you are sitting next to a mogul, a mogul, a mogul. You are sitting next to a business magnate, a business magnate, a financial tycoon, tycoon. You have no idea who you are sitting next to. Somebody, if you believe it, put your hand to and say something. Now, now, the Bible says that eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, neither has entered the hearts of men what God has planned for those who love him. Is there anybody here who loves the Lord? And is there anybody here who knows that you are called by a purpose? Say yes. So can I, can I announce to you? These millionaires that are going to rise up eh, are coming from an insignificant background. When you look at them, they don't smell like a millionaire. They don't act like a millionaire. They don't look like a millionaire. They are very simple, ordinary people. And God said it is not him that will it, nor him that run it, but God that showed mercy. God said, I'm going to pick nobody. The Bible said, I've taken the foolish things of this world to confirm the wise. You know why some of you, God can bless you and use you? You are too wise. I'm telling you. The reason why God can bless some folks in the church, eh? they are too wise, too sophisticated, too smart, too skillful. They know too much. But you know something? I'm one of those fools. The Bible said, let him that want to be wise in this world become a fool that he might become wise. When it comes to God, I'm a fool. When it comes to men, I try to be smart and I try to be wise. And I tell you, hey, dude, what do you think you're doing? My mama didn't raise some kind of a bastard here. Don't, don't, don't mess with me, dude. I, I know something. But when it comes to God, I'm a fool. When it comes to God, I don't know anything. Say yes. But I'm prophesying that God is about to raise up new millionaires in the church. Financial moguls, business tycoon, oil shake. You will emerge from nowhere. It's coming. It will be suddenly. And it will have nothing to do with you. It shall be the doing of the Lord. Give me some 126. Come on, somebody. If you haven't had a dream before, you are about to dream. Tell somebody, may I announce to you that you are about to dream. Somebody is about to dream. I don't know who you are. I don't know who I'm talking to. But somebody is about to dream. Come on, somebody. If you believe you are about to dream, put your hands together and give God some praise. Yes, sir.
when the Lord turned again the captivity yes, of Zion, yes, we were like them that dream. Here, listen. How many of you have watched The Taste of Sin on Netflix? You've watched The Taste of Sin of Netflix? Netflix. If you haven't watched it, you should watch it. It's trending. We're out there. Number one in many, many countries. You've got to watch it on Netflix. The Taste of Sin. There's another movie coming out very soon entitled The Curse Breaker. Tell somebody, may I announce to you that you are a curse breaker? Yes, sir. You are a curse breaker. Because God is about to do something with you that has never been done before. Yes, sir. When the Bible says, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has entered into the hearts of men. You know what it means? It means that what God is about to do with you has never been done before. It has never been seen before. Your grandfather, great-grandfather, since God said, let there be light, what is about to happen has never been happened, has never happened before. It's going to be the first time in history. You are a history maker. You are about to make history. Give two people a high five. Tell them you are about to make history. You are about to make history. You are a history maker. Yes, sir. You are about to make history. You are, his you are a history maker. You are a game changer. One of my daughters said to me the other day, she said, Daddy, she passed by and saw my hometown, my father's village. And she said to me, Daddy, I passed by your dad's village. And she said, Dad, I see why you pray the way you pray. And I said, thank you. You see how I pray the way I pray? Yes, sir. Because if you look at my village, where my father comes from, I got to pray the way I pray. I got to pray like crazy. Are you hearing me, somebody? I got to be a curse breaker. Because if I don't break some curses, are you hearing me? The curse keeps you down. The curse incapacitates you. A curse limit restricts you, grounds you. Are you hearing me? A curse is designed to reduce your creativity and, 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 and to reduce your productivity to inactivity and to desensitize your sensitivity. So you are alive. You don't feel anything. Don't sense anything. You are not creative about anything. You are just grounded. There is an embargo on you. But today I declare somebody is breaking the curse. Somebody hearing me is breaking the curse. You are breaking the curse that have kept people from your bloodline down and under. You are breaking that curse. You are imagining. You are breaking free. You are breaking loose. You are breaking out. Somebody say yes. You see, Mary was a curse breaker. What happened in the life of Mary? has never been happened before. Never happened in history. Where a virgin gets pregnant without a man. No man. No sex. She got pregnant. That, that is a curse breaker. She broke new grounds. Can I prophesy to somebody? You are about to break a ground that no one in your family and bloodline has ever broken. You are about to obtain some dimensions in life that nobody in your father's house and mother's house has ever obtained. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say something. Come on. Put your hands together. Say something. Call it by name. Say something. Because it's about to happen. You know, hear me. It is said and believed that people who make history don't know when they are making history. Can I, can I say it again? It is belief that people who make history in life don't know it when they were making history. Turn to two people and eh? tell them, may I submit to you that you are making history? Yeah. You are making history. Tell somebody else, you are a history maker. You are a history maker. Now, I know you have limitations. I know you have restrictions. But what makes you a curse breaker and what makes you a history maker is because it's not by might 
nor by power. It's not by skill. It's not by your education or where you come from or your connection or your experience. It is by the doing of the Lord. Say yes. Go back to one, Psalm 126. Look at it again. When the Lord turned again our captivity, we were like them that dream. Tell somebody, tell two people, you, eh? You're about to dream. You're about to dream. Yeah. You're about to dream. What God is about to do for us, it will be like a dream. Shadakutan, kelitu kawasatun, kefanda kasin, lewan kasalanda kapasalud, Iwahasi kadum ke palun takasaya. Let's go ahead. Now come with me to Acts 28, 25, 27, 25. Wherefore says, uh -huh. be of good cheer. Yes, sir. For I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. You see, here was Paul. And Paul said, I receive a word. This was in Logos. This was Rima. Logos is the written word. Rima is the spoken word. So an angel of the Lord came and gave him a rima. And he said, I believe. And therefore, I speak. He said, I believe God that I will see what I was told. I will see the manifestation of what I was told. Say, I declare before heaven and earth that in my lifetime, I will see the full manifestation of everything that is told me by the word of the Lord. In my lifetime, I will feel the full manifestation thereof without fail. See, I will not die prematurely. See, I will not die by poisoning. I will not die by food, nor drink, nor water. I will not die in my sleep. I will not die by land, by air, by water. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Say, I will not be killed, but I will live. And I'll be satisfied with a full old age. Yes, sir. I'll show you something. Tell somebody, your ladder, your ladder is greater than your past. If you believe it, put your hands together and say something. Acts 16, 20. Acts chapter 16, verse 20, quickly. Uh, Mark, Mark 16. Mark 16, 20. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the mm -hmm. Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. Uh -huh. Amen. So, the Lord is waiting for us to speak the word. To speak the word. And as we speak the word, he confirms his word with signs following. The other day, I, I, met, I met one of the twins that witnessed to me on the bed of affliction. She came to see me. Very simple, ordinary lady. She led me to Christ. She spoke the scriptures. She and then Dr. Raj, the Indian scientist, also came and watered the word they spoke. Simple people, two ladies. They weren't anything looking so powerful. They spoke the word. The Lord confirmed the word. And what was the sign? To snatch me from the crutches of darkness, from the hands of the enemy. All you got to do is to keep speaking the word, and the Lord will confirm the word. His, his, his word. Speak the word. Tell somebody, speak the word only. Speak the word only. If you speak the word, the Lord will confirm the word. Listen, the power is not about you and I. The power is the word. The power, every word of God has power to, to, to fulfill itself. But you and I have to speak it. So, I'm not powerful. It's the word of God that is powerful. I'm, I'm like you. I have nothing. I don't have anything, but I have the word. And when you have the word, you are somebody. Did you hear what I said? When you got the word, you are somebody. Say yes. And that's why you must have the word above every other thing. Amen. I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. And, and Jesus is the word made flesh. For in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word took flesh and dwelt among us. So when you have the word, you have Jesus. When you have Jesus, you have the word. And when you have the word, you have everything. For all things was made by the word, and there was nothing made that was made without the word. And all things consist by the word. So when you have the word, you have everything. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Say something. 
Listen, you can be gifted, you can be anointed, but if you don't have the word, it's just a matter of time, you will wither. But you might not be gifted. You might not look anointed. But if you have the word, you're going to endure and last for a long time. Because it is written, the word of the Lord, the Bible says, and the grass withereth and the, and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. So if you have the word, you endure. Come on, put your hands together. Say something. Okay, let me get into my message quickly. Let me, now, I'm now getting into my message. All that was introduction. Okay, so let's get in the word and I'll feed you a little bit and we'll continue. Okay, Job 1 3. Job 1 3. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels. Put it, put it on the screen. Put, put the positive and the negative in the middle whilst we read the two scriptures on the side. Okay, so look at something. Go ahead. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, mm -hmm. and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she asses or donkeys, mm -hmm. and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. So look at it. Chapter 42 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. So the Lord blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning. For he had 14,000 sheep and uh -huh. 6,000 camels uh -huh. and a thousand yoke of oxen uh -huh. and a thousand female donkeys. Uh -huh. And look at how many years he lived. Look, when, when the temptation and the loss came and the affliction came, he was 70 years. And restoration came and he lived another 70 years. So he died at the age of 140 years. Yes, sir. Are you hearing me? This His ladder... The beginning of the affliction, he was 70. And when God restored and compensated him, he moved from 70 to 140 years. Say double, 100 years restoration. Double, say double, 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 double. Now watch this. Look at, look at what he lost. Number one, how many thousand? 7,000 7, sheep. 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 He lost 7,000 sheep. His ladder, he gained 14,000. Go ahead. 3,000 3, camels, camels, and he gained, gained 6,000 camels. Go ahead. 500 yoke of oxen, is he, gained, he had 1,000 yoke of oxen. Go down. He had 500 female donkeys, he ended with 1,000 female donkeys. Tell somebody your ladder will be greater than your past. You know something? I'd rather have my ladder greater and better than having my ladder messed up. And for me, everything I've been through and suffered, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and the betrayal and everything, I thank God that it happened to me when it did. Are you hearing me? Because it's made me wiser today. I, I watch people and sometimes they don't know, they don't know I'm watching them. A lot of people underestimate my intelligence. Yeah, they do. And, and I like it and I love it when people underestimate my intelligence and think they're dealing with some foolish person. I like it that way. Because what it does is, it makes me read you and see inside out of you. Without you knowing, I know. Amen. I was talking to one of my bishops about somebody. The other day something happened and this person came to see me and said, Papa, Papa, how are you dealing with these things? How are you handling? I said, nothing. And he said, but, but after all the deal, and I said, yes, yes, yes. Don't worry about it. I said, this is the key. The most important thing is the awareness. Tell somebody awareness. Yeah, just know. If you see a snake here, and you see the snake, and the snake doesn't see you, you're in a good place. You just avoid the snake. So, you avoid it. But if you don't see it, you go step on the snake. And that is dangerous. So, in life... It's not no, you, you don't have to always let people know you know. Just the awareness is okay. Yeah, just be aware. And, 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 and hear me. And the awareness don't mean you must do something. No. You don't have to always do something. Because there are certain battles in life, eh? You win by not fighting. And 
And there are some battles in life, eh? You win by fighting. So you must know when to fight and when to hold your peace. And there are some battles in life, eh? You can win and still lose. And there are some battles you can lose and still win. It's all about timing. Tell somebody, timing, 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 timing. And it's about how you also fight and what you fight with. Yeah. I was talking to somebody the other day. He said, Papa, Papa, how are you? And I said, I'm good. And he said, but how are you dealing with everything? And I said, let me tell you how I win my battle. I work through peace within. I fight with peace within. I don't fight by what is on the outside. I rule by what is in the inside. And I said, I am at peace within. And I let the peace within control what is on the outside. I don't let the outside control what is within. So there can, there can be so much going on. And sometimes you look at my countenance. And those close to me can tell that something is going on. And it doesn't matter what my countenance looks. I am not... I am not reigning by my countenance. I am letting the peace within control. And I don't let anything touch the peace within me. And if you push, I will not let you cross that line. If you try to cross, I will block you. Because as soon as I lose my peace within, I'm in trouble. Yeah. But as long as I maintain the peace within, I have the upper hand. It's just a matter of time. Clap your hands, say something. We've read Job 42, 16, and 17. 42, 16, and 17. After this lived Job 140 years and saw his sons and his sons' sons, even four generations. So Job died being old and full of days. Can you believe that? Tell somebody, I'm going to outlast. Yeah, yeah, tell somebody, I'm going to outlast. And I'll outlive so many people who think they are messing with me. I will outlast them all and outlive all of them. It's just a matter of time. Make no mistakes. Kadula Musa. Kefalang kuwasang katanda kasilind fulum kuwund tumundu kuwahadun meleku tu kalakasa salama katalakasa. Are you hearing me? He lived. Put it back again. Four generations. How many generations? Four generations. Forty-two, sixty. Yes, sir. Huh? Eh? How many generations? Four. Generations. Four generations. I call it, and I say it. I will see my children, 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 children. I will see grandchildren to the fourth generation. That is my portion from the Lord in the land of the living. Say yes. Then look at it. 17. Look at 17. So, so Job, Job died being old and full of days. Full of what? Day. Full of what? Say, I'll be full of days. Say, I will wax old in good health with a sound mind, full of days, full of yes. Come on, somebody. Say it and clap your hands. Say it and clap your hands. I will wax old. I'll be full of days, of yes, in good health. And with a sound mind. What a blessing. What a blessing. Are you clapping your hands? Say, I dismiss. Say, I intercept. Say, now, now give me some 62. Give me some 62 verse 3. I, I got to counter something here. Somebody say, counter attack. Say, counter petition. Say, counter command. Say, counter declaration. Now, say, in the name of Jesus. Anyone that has imagined a mischief, anyone that has imagined evil, an ill will, an evil imagination, 
concerning me and my house, this house and my loved ones, say I intercept that imagination. Say I block it and overturn it. Put your hands together. Block, intercept, overturn. Come on, somebody. Block, intercept, overturn. Anyone that has imagined ill and mischief against me, my loved ones, home and abroad, and this house, waiting to hear something bad, negative or evil, of us and of this house. In the name of Jesus, we block, intercept their imaginations, which they have imagined, and let them be slain. Now hear me. Get the full scripture. Get the full scripture. Listen, how long will... How long will you, you imagine mischief against a man? Uh -huh. You shall be slain, all of you. So, we need to declare that one too. Say, let them... Whoever they, are, whoever they are, say whoever are the them, are the them. that has imagined imagine. mischief against me and this house, let them be slain. All. Let them be slain. All of them. Put your hands together. Declare the word. Let them be slain. Let them be slain. That imagine ill, evil, a wicked imagination, mischievous thoughts and imagination, waiting to hear something bad and evil of us and of our loved ones and our household and this house. Let it turn on them and let them be slain, slain, slain. Put your hands together, slain. Now, now, give me verse 4. These, these scriptures are not there for us to read them. They are not there for us to read. They are there for us to execute it. Yeah. Psalm 149. We'll go to Psalm 149 from verse 6, 7, and 8. You see. These are the judgment written. And it is the honor of all saints to execute them. Say execute. Yeah. You, if you don't execute them, it will just be lying there. Go ahead. They only consult to cast him down from his excellency. Uh -huh. Say, anybody that has entered into any kind of negotiation, deals or cartels, and have imagined ill to bring me down from my place of elevation and exaltation. Say, whoever they are, wherever they are, let it backfire. Let it boomerang. Put your hands together. Command. Boomerang. Backfire. Boomerang. Backfire. Boomerang. Backfire. Boomerang. Backfire. Boomerang. Backfire. In the name of Jesus, let it boomerang. Backfire. Backfire. Say over ten. Over ten. Over ten. Over ten. Over ten. Over ten. It. Now, come, come to Psalm 149. Look at verse six. And verse 7 and verse 8. Uh -huh. Let the high praises of God be in their mouth. Yes, sir. And a two edged sword in their hand. Yes, sir. To execute vengeance upon the heathen. To do what? To execute vengeance against. To read vengeance? No. To study vengeance? But to what? Execute. How? How? Say through the mouth, the mouth, the mouth. Say through your mouth. Execute the judgment. Written, go ahead. And punishments upon the people. Yes, sir. To bind their kings with chains. We and their bind nobles, their kings with chains. And their nobles with fetters of and iron. And their nobles with the fetters of iron. We to tie them up. To execute upon them the judgment written. Uh huh. This honor of all his saints. This word, this honor. No. This word, honor. So it is an honor to deal with them. Because the whole world lies in wickedness. It is an honor to deal with them. Eh? Go to First Thessalonians. I think it's one six. Second Thessalonians. Yeah, Second Thessalonians one six. Quickly. Seeing it is a righteous thing with God uh -huh. to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you. Sin is unrighteous. Sin is not biblical. But seeing what? To what? Today I declare by the word of the Lord, anyone troubling us, anyone troubling this house, 
Anyone troubling our children, let the Lord trouble them. Come on, put your hands together. Declare, Lord, let them be troubled that trouble us. Let them be troubled that trouble this house. Trouble them that trouble this nation. Come on, somebody. Put your hands together. Pray that prayer. I can't hear you. Your prayers are too weak. Pray that prayer. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sit down for two minutes. Sit down for two minutes. Give me second, second Kings 8.3. Second Kings 8.3 and 8.6. Quickly. And it came to pass yeah. at the seven years end. Uh -huh. That the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines. Uh -huh. And she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. Yes, sir. And yes, when sir. the king asked the woman, she told him. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer, saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruit of the field since the day that she left the land, even until now. Say divine compensation. So this is not just restoration. This is getting back all that was taken from you with interest. Say, give me back my goods with interest. Give me back. Give me back my blessing with interest. I'm coming back for what is mine with interest. Put your hands together. Say yes. If you took a million dollars or CDs from me, let's say 14 years ago, at the then dollar, you can't give it to me. And it's coming back to you with interest. It's a divine compensation. It's not going to be like what was taken. It's coming back with interest. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say something. Now, look at, look at Proverbs. Look at the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 6. Proverbs chapter 6. Verse 30 and 31. Look at this. You see, until we say it, nothing happens. It's not enough to read it. You can read, meditate, and nothing happens. It is when you say it, yes, call it, name it, that you see it. Right. Men do not despi despise a thief if he still to satisfy his soul when he is hungry. Uh -huh. But if he be found, yeah. he shall restore sevenfold. He shall give all the substance of his house. Do you understand that? I don't think you do. Bishop, Bishop Yanko, please stand. I've known Bishop for 48 years now. This year, 48. So, this is Bishop's phone. Okay. I'm taking it from you, but I'm not the thief. It's somebody else. <laughs> Amen? I ain't no thief. No, no it's somebody else. So Bishop has lost his phone. A thief took the phone. So this is the deal. They took one phone, but when you identify that the devil has stolen it, and he is the thief, he cometh not but to kill, to steal, and destroy. The Bible said he's going to pay back Seven times, so he gives you seven cell phones. Seven cell phones. And not that only. Every other thing that he has stolen from others in his house that others cannot claim or hasn't claimed, all that will be added to what he took from you. So this thing is no joke. If, do you see what I mean? That means other people's breakthrough are coming to you. Yeah. Every substance of his house, things that he stole from others and they haven't pursued, overtake and recovered, all is being added to us. I'm taking full possession. Say, I'm taking full possession. Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. Where the word of the king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, what doest thou? Okay, look at something. Come with me quickly. Exodus 12, 36. Exodus 12, 36. Quickly. Mm -hmm. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, 
so that they lent unto them such things as they required, and they spoiled the Egyptians. Somebody here is about to spoil those who wasted your father and your mother. The waster is about to be wasted. Let the waster be wasted. As you step out of this ground today, to the marketplace, to everywhere, to your job, to town, let the waster be wasted. Let the waster be wasted. Let the enemy be dispossessed of his possession and be disinherited of his inheritance and let power change hands let money change hands somebody put your hands together say something say something amen amen Jeremiah 30 17 for I will restore health unto thee and I will heal thee of thy wounds, saith the Lord. Because they call thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. You see, God said, You know why I'm going to favor you? I'm going to favor you because you are an outcast. You'll be looked down upon. You know, sometimes things can get so bad with you that even loved ones and brethren will despise you. They will mock at you. Literally laugh at you. They will look at you and despise you. Look down on you. Call you names. But God said, because they did that to you. Because they did that to you. Because they wrote you off, despise you. Because you became a proverb and a byword. God said, I'm going to turn things in your favor. I'm going to turn the tables in your favor. I'm going to restore your health. I'm going to heal your wounds. I'm going to do a new thing. And I will cause men to stand in awe. Come on, somebody. If you believe it, put your hands together. Say something. You know, I've dealt with some very powerful people. Very powerful people. And sometimes, you know what some believers do? When they have issues with you, eh, they try to go and find somebody they think is more anointed than you. And they bless them and give them money and do things to them and deploy them to prophesy or to speak against you. And that gives them confidence that they are getting away. You are joking. You are joking. It's just a matter of time. You can't tell who is anointed than who. It is God who knows and determines who is anointed than who. And you want to know who is anointed? Is the one that has been to the battle and has returned and has removed his armor. He is the one anointed. Not the one that is now going and not the one that is now at the battlefield. So don't talk to me about anointing. You know who is anointed? The Idahoses of old. The T.L. Osborns of old. The A.A. A. Allens. The Papa Higgins. The Morris Arellos. The Lester Samuels. The Ura Roberts. The John G. Lakes. These are the anointed ones. Not you and I who are still in the race and struggling. And until the race is finished, it's over. Take it easy. Take it easy. I know you're anointed. Take it easy. I know you run seven services at a class sports stadium every Sunday morning. But still, take it easy. For the race is not to the swift, nor the battle to the mighty. The Lu Kasun, Ketula Kasalan. Lefang kasum watalan is just a matter of time. Tell somebody it's just a matter of time. I know right now you are loaded and you are connected and you are a big ball in town, but still take it easy. Take it easy because time changes. Clap your hands and say something.
Ruth 4.15. And he said, and he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life. A restorer of? Thy life. Restorer of what? Your life. Tell somebody, my life is coming back to me. Life is coming back to me. It's coming back to me. You hear me? The other day, when Jacob was all alone, God said, Jacob, I've been waiting for this time. I've been waiting to have you giving me an undivided attention. Now that it's just you, I will wrestle you, young man, and I'll break your confidence in the flesh. I will break you, dismantle you, that you will have no confidence in yourself. And by the time I'm through with you, you're going to leave my present and you're going to be leaping, leaping. Have no confidence in your flesh. That, that, you know, that, uh, what do you call it? The Americans have a name, they call it, uh, that he got, Bishop, how do you call it? He got a swag, swag. The guy call it galley, galley, swag. God said, Jacob, I'm going to take your swag. Before, before the Lord rested him, he had, he had a swag. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Confidence in, his, in himself, the swag. And God said, Jacob, by the time I'm through with you, you're going to lose confidence in your skill, your education, your degree, your doctrine, and all this foolishness you boast about. I'm going to strip you of everything. And Jacob left the wife, the kids, everybody. He had a swag. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? By the time he met them, Jacob, what happened? Nothing. You okay? Lee, in Lee, say, confidence in the flesh. And you're going to walk leaning on the everlasting arm, having nothing to boast of. Sometimes I see people when God blesses them, suddenly they start looking at their bloodline and their family tree and history and they try to find somebody there that once upon a time served God, somebody who was the reason why God blessed them. And I look at them and I say, look at this big fool. Look at this big shegelele. God showed you kindness and mercy and instead of you to give God glory, you're trying to find somebody and a reason in your bloodline. In no good in your bloodline. It's just an act of God's mercy. You think God called me because my grandfather or father or somebody did some good? No. God just decided to show me mercy. It's all about mercy. And I, God, God help me if I ever give credit to anybody in my bloodline. Nobody. Nobody deserves Anything, including myself, but mercy. 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 Stop trying to find some grandfather and grandmother of yours who served the Lord and did something right, and that's why God showed him mercy. You are joking. God just decided to pick you up. Who in Abraham's family, since God said, let there be light, did anything right by God? And that was the reason why God chose Abraham. From a background of idol worship. Nobody. God just decided to show mercy. Who in the family of Noah or Job who lived before Noah and lived before Abraham? God just decides. He said, I will have mercy on whom I will. It's not him that willeth, nor him that runs, but God that showeth mercy. That's it. I said to my kids the other day, I said, you all, eh, I need to show you where I used to stay, all of you. You need to know me. You need to know where this father of yours came from. I said, you must know where I came from and why I am what I am. 
Yeah. Why I show kindness. Why I have compassion. And why I, why, why I refuse to lose my humanity. Yeah. And why I even do good to those who exploit me, yeah. take advantage of me, and hurt me. I know it. Yeah. I know it. Bishop will tell you. I know people exploiting, taking advantage, and still I bless them. I bless them. I just did good to somebody right now after the first service. I didn't have to see him. He doesn't even deserve to come into my presence. But I said, come, 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 come. He came. And I prayed for him. And I said, Father, let her find her way. Let her not miss her way. Let her see the light. Let her not wander in the wilderness of life. Show her mercy, for she's somebody's daughter, Lord. She's somebody's daughter. Her mother carried her for nine months and suffered many things. The mother went to the labor ward. Show her mercy, I pray. And I prayed good for her because I want good for my kids. So I prayed good for somebody's child. Not because, not because she deserves good from me. She deserves me saying, mm -hmm. Huh? Bishop Esando is looking at me, covering his face. <laughs> a point, a point. A point, pow! Somebody say, pow! Oh. That is carnality, it's not spirituality. See, I hear you. Okay, I, I, I have to stop for now. Yeah, I gotta stop. I come back to you. Let me give you two more scriptures. Psalm 51 verse 12 and Re Psalm 23. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation mm -hmm. and uphold me with thy free spirit. Yes, sir. Psalm 23 verse 3. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. Amen. You know something? Restore your joy. I think for right now, I feel the anointing is lifted. I'm going to hand over to Bishop Buddha and Dick Sando them to run the service and pray for me. Pray for your father. Stand on your feet. When, when the oil is lifted, you are better saying nothing because I got nothing to give you when the oil is lifted. But when the oil is on me, I got a lot to say. But when the oil is lifted, I got nothing for you. And right now, I got nothing for you for now. In Jesus' name. Bishop, listen, don't forget, how many businessmen and women do we have here? Give me a wave offering. Businessmen and women and professionals. Okay, I need to make this announcement. I'm not preaching, so this is not preaching. This is an announcement. On the 20th of April, we are having a breakfast and a lunch meeting with some very important individuals we've invited some from within and out to come and to address the house and it's about empowering the professionals and the business community in the church you have to become a community you have to establish a network if you don't come together you will not survive two is better than one one shall put a thousand to fly so two must put 2,000 to flight. But God said, if you come together and I see synergy, instead of addition, I will multiply. So when he said two shall put 10,000 to flight, that is multiplication. And God is in the business of multiplication, not addition. God multiplies. The, the, the business community, the wealth of this country is not controlled by Ghanaians. If you look at the Indian community, the Lebanese community, the Chinese community. There are Chinese people who are selling kenke in Ghana. They sell kenke. You won't sell it, but they are selling it. Their community, their force. Why? Because they are together. We are so divided. And Jesus said, any house, kingdom, and nation divided against itself cannot stand and will not stand. And I'm just telling you. I don't care how anointed you are, how connected, sophisticated you are. As long as you stand alone, you die alone. Tell them. You got to stick with the brethren. Commit. Take your cell phone, all of you who are in business and professionals. Take that information. There's some telephone number. They call it. It's free. Free breakfast, free lunch, 
free word, but all you have to do is to register to be there. And hear me, information, knowledge is acquisition of information. You don't know it all. So please, don't hold back and say, oh, well, well, you know, for me, I got a way, I got my coach. You ain't having no coach like this. Wait to the 20th and come sit there and listen. you realize that you've been ignorant all along. You need more. And good is not enough. You need better. The enemy is better is of the enemy is better is good. The enemy of better is good. So be better, get better. Be part of the network. Take hold of the information. Register online. The twentieth of April, seven thirty in the morning to one p.m. Breakfast and lunch. The business and professionals in this house are coming together to network among ourselves so that money stays within our own camp. It's time for money to circulate among us. In America, watch this, in America, money circulates in the black community for six hours. Six hours. The Asian community, 21 days. The Jewish community, six weeks. Until money circulates among us, we will always be broke. The Arabs, their community, their force. And I found something recently, it's on my phone. Do you know how much tight the Arabs pays? 40%. 40. And you Christians, you are crying with one 10%. And even the 10%, you criticize God. You criticize God, you criticize me, you criticize the angels, you criticize heaven. Turn to someone and say, what's wrong with you? I'm true. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, put your hands together and give God praise. I give you a moment to respond to the word you've heard. You want to pray. He said, your latter shall be better. Your latter shall be better. Your latter shall be greater. Your latter shall be more awesome than your past. For a minute, you want to pray. That God, let your original plan for my life come into manifestation. Lift up your voice, pray. Just talk to God, wherever you are. Talk to God. Speak about your life. Something must change in your life. Something must change in the lives of your children. Something must change in your business. Something must change. These promises are the promises of God to his children. So in the midst of this time of prayer, if you are in this auditorium under the sound of my voice or wherever you are connecting from, and you recognize and acknowledge that I don't know this God they are talking about. I'm not born again. I'm not a child of God. I don't have a covenant relationship with God. But I want to have one. I want to know this God for myself. So I can also decree and declare that my latter surely, according to his word, shall be greater. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand quickly and we'll pray with you. Is there anybody here who says, I need Jesus. I want to make peace with God. I want to be a member of God's family. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to serve this God who has power to turn all things around. If you are that person and your hand is you please come quickly. Come join me quickly in front and let us pray. Anybody here, I need Jesus. I want to make peace with God. I don't want to go to hell. I want to make peace with God. Please come now. Please come now. Church, can you please stand? You don't need to sit. Just remain standing. You don't need to sit. If you need to give your life to Jesus, please come now. You want to make peace with God. God bless you, my brother. At the top, I see you. Please come. Make peace with God. The promises of God, the Archbishop, our Papa is talking about, are promises to the children of God. It's not open to just everybody. But you can connect to the same God and receive a manifestation of His power that will turn your life around and bring you into the, the family that God is talking about. So please come. Don't, don't postpone the decision at all. Come confidently. Come in faith. And give your life to Jesus and make peace with God. Anybody else? Make peace with God. Make peace with God. Make peace with God. Give your life to Jesus. Join the family of God. Join the family of God's people. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I wait for my brother coming from the third level. God bless you.
You may also be in the service today and recognize that you are not who you used to be. You are not where you used to be. It's, I used to be committed to the things of God. I was dedicated to the things of God. But for whatever reason, I've fallen back. Today, I want to rededicate my life to Jesus. You can come forward also. Is there anybody here who wants to rededicate your life to Jesus? You want to come back to your roots. Get committed to church again. Get committed to the things of God again. You can come forward quickly. Anybody here? Anybody here? If you must come, please come now. For those of you online, you want to take this step, please join us in this prayer also. Church, can we together support our brothers as we make this confession unto the Lord? With your right hand lifted, say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your son Jesus to die in my place to pay the price for my sin. I believe that you raised him up again from the dead for my salvation. I accept Jesus Christ today as my Lord and my Savior. Father, forgive me and write my name in your book of life. Help me from today to live for you. I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. Congratulations, my Is that you? Is that a face I knew long ago? Hallelujah. Good to see you. Welcome home. God bless you. Amen. If you turn around, I have a brother here. Please go with him. He has some information for you, and then you come back. God bless you. Praise the Lord. For those of you online, you will have numbers on your screen before the service is over. Call those numbers. There are people waiting to help you. Please be seated. Let's welcome Bishop Dicky Sandor to receive our tithe and offering for this morning. Give the Lord a clap in the house this morning. What a word. Are we clapping for Jesus? Is that say it, see it, and call it. Amen. What a word. And we pray that God will just let this settle in your spirit and it shall become a practical thing in your life. Amen. It's time for tithes and offering. And I want us for a moment to look at 2 Chronicles chapter number 6 and 7. 2 Chronicles chapters number 6. If you can have that on the screen. It says, now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. No, 2 Chronicles, I'm sorry, 2 Chronicles 1. 2 Chronicles 1, verse 6 and 7. 2 Chronicles 1. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation, and offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. Verse 7. In that night did God appear unto Solomon and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. See that, amen? In the day Solomon gave his offering, the Bible said, that night, the Lord said, Ask what I shall give thee. Look at someone and say, Say something. Say it again. Say, say something. Now look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. Look at verse 9. 2 Chronicles 1, 9. Now, O Lord, let thy promise unto David my father be established. Amen. As you sow your seed today, as you ask God for something, may the promises of God be established in your life today. Say an amen. All right, if you have your tithe, come forward. Bring your tithe and those with the offering, let's prepare ourselves. And we're going to sow and invoke the promises of God upon our seed. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's do this. Take up your tithes. For those of you online, we have information on, online for you. And if you're given by all the digital platforms, please put that up so that people can give in different ways. We have different channels, so we make sure that you never miss out on an opportunity to be a blessing in the house of the Lord. Say an amen. Every season, every message, every gathering, every word has its own grace and anointing upon it. Amen. And I pray that today, your seed will speak for you. Your tithes will see something. And your seed will call something into manifestation. Do I have a Hosanna in the house? Shout Hosanna in the house. It's Palm Sunday. Shout Hosanna. Hallelujah. Lift those of you in the back. Please stand. Lift up your offerings. And we'll pray over it. And then we'll continue with the service. See an amen. Stand please with your offering in hand. If you are giving electronically, please let's have the information on, on the screen. And if you're watching us online, please be a part of this. And may the blessings of the Lord come into your house in Jesus. And lift up your offering. 
Say, Heavenly Father, I lift up the seed before your altar. I invoke every blessing recorded, written, spoken upon my life. Establish it for your glory. In Jesus' name, say an amen. Father, as we sow our seed, let the promise of divine healing manifest in the lives of your people. We declare that by the voice of our seed and the promise of your word, we root out infirmities. We root out cancer. We declare that let the roots of every heart attack, stroke, any sickness in the body, let it dry up in the name of Jesus. Any curse pronounced to disempower you, we overrule in the name of Jesus. We declare that by the words of our mouth, we release healing, we release blessing, we release prosperity, we release peace, we release victory, we release triumph in the name of Jesus. As we have declared it, our eyes shall see it and we call it into manifestation in Jesus' name. Say an amen. God bless us as we give our offering unto the Lord. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Bishop. Yes. So a few highlights from our service. As you can see, in the main auditorium, we are just giving our offerings. Amen. So cast your seed with gladness. Cast your seed with gladness as you give your seed to the Lord. 
Amen. Just a few highlights from the services this morning. Our Father, this morning, He made mention of a few key things in that faith is of the heart and not of the head. So we encourage in this season of Easter to walk in faith and not with our minds or with our heads. and give God praise. For those of you who don't know, today is Palm Sunday. Many, many years ago, over 2,000 years ago, adults like you and I were throwing their clothes, carrying palm branches, and hailing Jesus and shouting Hosanna. In our generation, we have left it to the children, and the adults are dignified crossing their legs. But in that time, it was the adults. Put your hands together and give God praise. And shout, Hosanna to the King. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yesterday we laid a precious brother to rest, our brother Anthony Planjanan. The family is here to thank the Lord. Can I have the family please come forward, Angela? Uh, 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 the family of our brother Anthony. Are you in the house? Okay, they are at the back. Somewhere, Helena and the children, where are all of you? Okay, they're coming. Our brother Anthony, Helena has worked with the church for many years. She's our precious secretary at the, in the main administration. And yesterday we had to lay her precious husband, Anthony, a call, Atakakra, plunge, Anan, to rest. And the family is here too. Thank the Lord. Can I have the clergy please come down? Please come forward. The Bible says the God of all comfort is the God you and I serve. He's a God of mercies and he's able to comfort us with such great comfort and bring us to the place where we are also able to comfort those who are caught in any form of tribulation. So today we comfort each other with the words of the Lord. Amen. I want to invite the bishop, Derek Nunekbeku, to pray for the family. Let us pray. Church, can you please stretch your hand towards this family? Heavenly Father, we ask that you preserve this family. Console them. Comfort them. Be there for them at all times. In their quiet moment, Lord, be there for them. In whatever it is, whatever it is that they need in their life, precious Lord, be there to meet it in their life. We ask that the hand of Jehovah will be strong upon this family. That the Lord will restore all your loss. The Lord will give you the comfort you desire. The Lord will meet every need you need as a family. We pray that let the Almighty God, the God of all flesh, may He be a father for you all. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And the church will say a big amen. We also want to acknowledge our sister, Lady Apostle Veronica Mills. Great. Mills Lamte. Thank you so much for coming and standing Another with us. Another opportunity the family. to the family be gathered. Giving offering unto the Lord. In God's presence. Lord. Hold on to this. Let me start Today you. is Palm Sunday, you, and we thank God for that which Christ Jesus has done for us on Calvary. Hallelujah. A few highlights from this morning's word from our father, the Archbishop. Um, he preached from Mark 11, verse 24. On not 
doubting I can't believe because it. doubt is from the heart. And a few well, key points from his scriptures, faith is, is of here. the heart Can we invite and the not forward? of the head. And so we need to have faith in God in this season as we are celebrating Easter. Also, our father mentioned that whatever you don't want, don't call it out. And so we need to declare only that which the word of God says concerning us in this season. Because the blood of Jesus speaks and it speaks better things. Confess the word of God in this season so that that which God has thought concerning you alone can come to pass. And that which God has purpose concerning you shall come to pass. And so we wish you compliments of the season. Be blessed as you continue to join us in our service for today. Let's go back into the service as we are having some birthday celebrations. And I will come right back to you. Thanks for staying with us so far. God bless you. Bishop Emeritus Joseph Nyako and will pray for the March tribe. It's my tribe too, so I'm going to pray. <laughs> Father, the Bible says that it is you who advance Aaron and Moses. Thank you for the much born. Today, you are the same God who helped advance your servants. Let much born have that advancement of life to Right through every limitation, every embargo, every resistance that wrestle with where you are taking them. Because you advanced Aaron and Moses, they broke through every limitation and they are fierce fell upon their enemies. You did it. Let advance born today in your presence experience such an encounter and such release, such deliverances that whatever have Oppose them, resist them, stood their way that they have no answer for. Today, give them answers, give them solutions, let them break through those limitations, and lift their head up above their enemies. Let them shine, let them increase. Let them go forward. Let it be taken out of the hands of their enemies. And in your hands, do them good. Give them testimony. Let them rejoice for being born in the march, in the calendar of God. Today, do them good. Honor them. Favor them, increase them, and give them a testimony of your faithfulness. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. The Magbones have a thanksgiving offering also unto the Lord. God bless you, and go enjoy your lives. 
Those whose birthdays are yet to come, remember to invite us to come and eat the cake. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. We want to invite Minister Mantinson to come and continue with the service. You like them? Hallelujah. Amen. It's a good place to say amen. Let us appreciate our papa, the Archbishop, for this powerful word that he gave to us. Year in and year out, he's giving us his word, and it's becoming more powerful and powerful every day. Let's continue to pray for him that God will increase the oil upon his head and increase the unction a function for him to be able to function so far as this unction is concerned. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As our tradition goes, we have some very special people amongst us we want to acknowledge. If you are here for the first time, or this is the first time of worshiping with us, so far as this church is concerned, this is Action Chapel Prayer Cathedral. We want to acknowledge you wherever you are in this auditorium. Uh, wherever you are, may you please uh, kindly raise up your hand, lift up your hand. Let us acknowledge you wherever you find yourself in the auditorium. If you are here for the first time, let us see by your hand wherever you find yourself. Let us, let us acknowledge them. And can you do us a further favor, another favor? If you can lift up your bags, your Bible, your belongings, and come forward here so that we give you a proper action welcome and acknowledge you wherever you come from. So let us appreciate them wherever they are coming from. If you are here for the first time, this is the first time of worshiping with us in Action Chapel. Please come forward. Let us acknowledge you. And amen. 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 They are still coming. They are still coming. Let us, let us acknowledge them. Amen. And you may also be here and you say, I've been coming here for some time, be watching me here for some time. I see what is going on. I appreciate what is going on. Well, I've been watching Archbishop on TV, online, and I like what is going on. God is here. And today, you want to make it your decision that you want to make this place your place of worship, a home for yourself. You want to be part of the work of God here. You want to be part of this ministry. If you are here and you find yourself in that situation also, you want to be a member of this church. Uh, can you also rise up, uh, if possible? Rise up, take your bags, your bags and everything. Please come to us. Let's acknowledge you. Uh, Archbishop has some important message for us and some gifts for us. So please, wherever you find yourself, anyone here? Anyone here? I want to be a member of this church. I've taken that decision after hearing such a powerful word. Let's, let's, let's welcome, let's welcome him as he's coming. Let's welcome them. Let's welcome. Hallelujah. You are welcome to Ashin Chapel. This is home. And this is where humanity meets divinity. Or divinity meets humanity. Please, if you can turn back, you see a gentleman in a kaftan. He will lead you to a place, give you some information and some special gifts from the Archbishop. Then you come back to come and join us before the service close. So please hope follow this gentleman and you'll be back soon. Yeah. All right. Let's appreciate them. Let's appreciate them. Let's keep clapping. Let's keep clapping until they make their journey back to where they are going. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's take note of a very important uh, Thanksgiving offering. The Bansin family is thanking God for the life of their precious daughter, Mamiya, who turned 18 yesterday. Hallelujah. What shall we render unto you, O Lord, for all your blessings unto us? Indeed, 
children are a blessing from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. Praise God forevermore. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's please pay attention to some important announcement for the day. Thank you. Amen. It's where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. Welcome to Action Chapel International, a place where divinity meets humanity. We are one church in many locations worldwide. Our vision is to make Christ known throughout the world through the multiplication of churches and denominations. Our mission is to train, equip, and develop Christ-like disciples through prayer, the Word of God, prophetic and spiritual warfare, deliverance, and soul winning for the end-time harvest. When we do something, heaven responds. I feel like something is about to happen in this building. We come on the grounds of the redemptive blood of Jesus. How do you know you're better now? <laughs> there are miracles. <laughs> I said there are miracles in this place. Action Chapel International Easter Convention 2024. From Wednesday, March 27th to Monday, April 1st. Hosted by His Eminence, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Special guest speaker, Bishop Michael Pitts. I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place. Services Wednesday, March 27th, 7 p.m. Thursday, March 28th, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Friday, March 29th, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Sunday, March 31st, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Let there be a recovery and a compensation. Family Fun Day on Monday, April 1st from 10 a.m. Venue is ACI Prayer Cathedral. Easter Convention 2024. Invite all your friends and family. When we do something, heaven responds. I feel like something is about to happen in this building. We come on the grounds of the redemptive blood of Jesus. How do you know you're better now? <laughs> there are miracles. <laughs> I said there are miracles in this place. Action Chapel International Easter Convention 2024. From Wednesday, March 27th to Monday, April 1st. Hosted by His Eminence, Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Special guest speaker, Bishop Michael Pitts. I feel the Holy Ghost. Moving in this place. Services Wednesday, March 27th, 7 p.m. Thursday, March 28th, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Friday, March 29th, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Sunday, March 31st, 7 a.m. and 10 a.m. Let there be a recovery and a compensation. Family Fun Day on Monday, April 1st from 10 a.m. Venue is ACI Prayer Cathedral. Easter Convention 2024. Invite all your friends and family. God called the light and said, let there be what? Light. And there was light. Tell someone, you got to call the light. You got to call the light. So whatever you don't want, don't call it. Tell somebody, whatever you don't want, don't call it. Because what you call will come to pass. Say, I refuse to call anything contrary to the word of God concerning my life. I will not call it. I will call what God has said. But nothing came until God said it or called it. Tell somebody, you have to say something. You have to say something. Tell somebody, you have to call it. You have to call it. And God called the dry land earth, that is verse 10, and the greater, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. You see, said, call. And God saw that it was good. You get it? God said, call, saw, and it was good. Amen. Amen. Tell somebody, Say it, see it, 
Call him. Put your hands together. Say something. We are still on. Go ahead. Verse 11, and God said, let the earth bring forth grass and herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind. Who and seed God himself said. And God said. And everything he said happened. Yes, Did sir. it happen? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Look 12. At and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree. So how fruit. did the earth, the Bible says, the earth walk brought forth yes, after God said? After God said. It means nothing happened until you say something. So clap your hands and say something. Say something. Say something. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The Lord will satisfy me with long life and his salvation. You have to say the word. You got to keep saying it to see. We believe, for whatever reason, that we deserve more than what we have. But what you have is what your ability can handle. How do I get more? Improve on yourself. Tell two people, just improve on yourself. That's the principle. If you improve on yourself, you can have more. So there is no need for jealousy. There's no need for envy in the church. There's no need for envy. And the reason for envy and jealousy in the house of God is, is a result of ignorance. People are just ignorant. You see, and, and covetousness, covetousness also is a result of people being insecure and wanting to have something they are not prepared and ready for. And I told you, there are things that I have believed and prayed for over the years that I never had because I wasn't ready for them. I was not ready, but I wanted it. Now watch this. The Bible didn't say that God will meet your wants. He said he will meet your needs. Your needs are things you can't do without, but wants are things you can do without. And God said, I will meet your needs. He didn't say your want. Now, I want so many things I don't need. For instance, I can want a Rolls Royce, but can I do without a Rolls Royce? Yes, of course. Now, if I don't have a car, I need a car. I need a car, which is helper, like the horse, to take me places. So I need a car. But I can have a car, and I can want a private jet, or I can want some things I'm not ready for, and I don't need. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word with your own mouth, not reading the Bible. I, oh, I read the Bible. It's not enough. Faith doesn't come by reading the Bible. And the devil is not afraid of you reading the Bible. He's not, he's not also afraid when you study the Bible. Because studying of the word brings understanding, but it doesn't bring faith. Understand it now what you are reading. Do you understand what you are reading? Daniel chapter 9. I understood by the books. So reading brings understanding. Then the Ethiopian eunuch, Philip asked him, he said, understand it thou. Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I understand if I don't have somebody to guide me? So reading the word brings understanding, but it doesn't bring faith. So those of you who just read your Bible and you think you've read the Bible, so that is it. You are joking. The demons will still attack you, don't worry you. It's not enough to read. You got to go past reading. You got to speak it. You got to give voice to the word. You got to proclaim it. Like you go to Psalm 35. You go to Psalm 35. The Bible says, plead my cause with them that strive with me. Oh Lord God, my shield and my buckler and my stronghold, plead my cause with them that strive with me, secretly and openly, plead my cause, take hold of shield, buckler, stand to my help and my defense. Oh Lord my God, you got to declare the scriptures. If you don't declare it, reading it is not enough. And stop putting the Bible under your pillow. A lawyer can know the law, but it's not enough for him to know the law. In order for the law to work before him, he goes to cause he stands before the judge and says, My Lord, my Lord, according to so so and so and so, article or section one, two, three, or what, and he quotes and he brings it before the judge. Then whoever is the opponent, the attorney, will raise an objection and say, My Lord, objection. Objection to that quote that he just mentioned. Then the judge has discretion to maintain or sustain 
the court or override it. So the judge will say, objection overrule or objection sustain. Counsel move on. So the word of God, the word of God is a technicality, it's a legality. And the danger with all of us is we just read the word and think because you read from Genesis to Revelation, it's enough. It's not enough. You have knowledge, you have understanding, but it doesn't produce faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing. Harvest Restaurant on Spintex, a culinary haven where passion meets freshness. And with skilled chefs craft delightful dishes with locally sourced ingredients. Whether you're celebrating or simply savoring, our modern ambience and exceptional service promise an unforgettable dining experience. Join us for a remarkable culinary adventure at the Harvest Restaurant, 37 Spintex Road. Reserve your table now. For reservations or inquiries, contact us at 59 7 one four three nine six three the harvest blessings welcome to dominion christian academy where we honor god to fulfill our dominion mandate my name is dahlia let me take you on a quick tour these are our principal's offices we have an open door policy here for students and teachers, so we usually have a lot going on in the principal's offices. Hello. Hi. This is our chemistry, physics, and biology lab, where we engage in all of our experiential learning. So what are you doing? Raising an aquatic plant and sodium hydrogen carbonate to investigate how carbon dioxide affects the rate of photosynthesis. So this is one of our um, music lessons going on here, and um, looks like they're having a lot of fun. This is a typical classroom that we have here. Most of our students in each class, they do math, science, English, and then for other subjects such as PE, drama, art, music, ICT, it's because we do have a lot of different projects that we do. And so as you can see, they've decorated their classroom very, very nicely. the only school with the direct spiritual covering of Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams, bringing decades of cutting edge expertise from around the world to one table and providing children an experience unlike any other. Kali and let's make the praise of our God glorious. Amen. And for those who are yet to watch The Taste of Sin, now you can get it on Netflix. Amen. And it's already doing wonders, touching lives across the continents of our world. Incidentally, we are part of the cast in the house. Can you please rise and, and, and give us a wave? Part of the cast for um, The Taste of Sin are in the house. Hallelujah. We salute you. Congratulations for the good work. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Now you are all over the world, and we pray that you'll be part of the next and the next and the next and the many more that are coming. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming to fellowship with us. Hallelujah. Amen. It's going to be more awesome in the coming years. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We want to stand. We're bringing, get, bringing our curtains down for today's service. In Psalm 61 and verse 6, the Bible said, Thou will prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. Oh, you are still sitting. You don't want to go home. Shall we please stand? <laughs> Thou will prolong the king's life. They had the desire to see their king live long. And so they were instructed to pray for the prolonging of the life of the king and that many, his years will be as many generations. I like the way the New Living Translation puts it. It said, add many years to the life of the king, O oh God. Say, O oh God. Add many years to the life 
of the Archbishop, Nicholas Duncan Williams. Then he said, may his years span the generations. Say amen. We want to lift up prayer for the servant of God. He prays for us from the depth of his heart. Is that a good prayer? Lift up your voice, begin to pray. We want to invite Bishop Derek Ninekweku to lead us in this short time of prayer for his eminence. Please lift your voice. Can we lift our voice? It's a good place to pray. Can you lift up your hands? It's a good prayer. He's fed us for many years. We need him to live long and live longer. And I believe that we've all benefited from his word. He's made us what we are today. And so, ladies and gentlemen, can we please lift up our hands right now? And let's say this boldly after me. Say, oh, Lord. Can we say that again? Say, oh, Lord. Prolong the years of our father, the Archbishop Nicholas Duncan Williams. Say, oh, Lord. Grant him more years. Let him live long and see many generations. Clap your hands, everybody. Begin to pray that prayer now. Prolong his years. Grant him good health. Let him live long and reap the fruit of his labor. Restore his strength. Energize him. Lift him up to the next level of his life. We decree and declare today that thou which, O oh Lord, you have destined for our Father, let it be materialized. Let it come to pass, O oh Lord. Strengthen his inner man. Grant him good health. Let him excel on every ground in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands with me. Heavenly Father, we have come before your throne as we lift up our Father, your servant, whom you have called and whom you have led through all these years. He's fed us in many ways. He's mentored lives. And Heavenly Father, as a congregation, our prayer today is that, like, oh Lord, give him long life. Prolong his years. Let him live long and see many, 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 many generations. We decree and declare that Almighty God, let your mighty hand rest upon him. Lift him up to the next level of his life. We decree and declare no power of the enemy will lay hands upon his life. But we pray that he will move from strength to strength, from glory to glory, from honor to honor. In the name of Jesus, if you believe that prayer, come and share. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. If you're traveling this week, please come forward. Let's cover you before you go. Let's worship. Don't forget, next gen is coming on tonight and next week. And then in May, we will switch. Amen. But tonight, we have next gen at 5 p.m. Come forward if you're traveling. Let's worship. As we bring our meeting to a close, we invite our Papa himself to please close us. your hands lifted up, we command safety, we command divine preservations, divine escapes, a safe passage, journey message, angelic escorts, angelic assistance, angelic protection, angelic intervention. We engage the angels, we deploy them, we engage the hand of the Lord over all travelers, 
across Africa, the Middle East, Europe, Asia, North America, South America. In the name of Jesus, put your hands together. Command it right now. Journey message. Safe passage. Angelic escort. Angelic protection. Angelic preservation. Divine assistance. Angelic assistance. Right now. Angelic intervention. Put your hands together. I enforce it. Pray. Journey message. Safe passage. By air. By land. By water. Divine escapes. Divine preservation. In the name of Jesus. Every crooked path made straight. Smooth travel. Smooth journeys. No complication. No, no, no complications. No strange happenings or any incidents by land and water. In the name of Jesus, make every, every mountain and hill plain, valleys exalted, rock places made smooth. Let your hand be engaged on the behalf of your people. Disappoint the expectation of the enemies of your people. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord. I want to sing, this is how I win my battle. This is how I win, win, win. This is how I win. You ready? You ready to go home? Please fill those forms. Give it back to us. We need that information. Move it. Lift it up. Now the Lord grant us and satisfy us with long life. And show us his salvation. Say surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will see his goodness in the land of the living. For the Lord is my portion in the land of the living. The Lord is my shield, my glory and the lift up of my head. Say as I live here, let nothing intimidate, nor threaten me or any loved one of mine, home and abroad, domestic or external. By oh Lord, let them be as chaff before the wind and as smoke by the wind that divides the head of your people. But thou, O Lord, do good unto us. Do good unto this house. Do good to all that name the name of Jesus. Now give me 2 Thessalonians 3.16. Receive these blessings as you live here. Receive these blessings. 2 Thessalonians 3.16. And now, let the very God of peace himself Give you peace, always, by all means. The Lord satisfy you with long life and show you his salvation. See you on Wednesday. Don't forget tomorrow morning. Don't forget tomorrow morning. Command your week. <laughs>